Hello fly fishers, Lance here from Fly Fish Food. You've probably seen the trend towards purple flies lately, and if you haven't already tried my red dart or blue dart pattern, you gotta try those, but you might also check out this new one, the purple dart, a new attractor. So this is much like the red dart and the blue dart, except you'd guess it, it's purple. Purple is, as you know, a hot color in fly tying right now. Purple dry flies, purple nymphs, purple streamers, purple everything. Purple, purple, purple. So uh, I figure if we can catch fish on purple grasshoppers, we ought to be able to do it on nymphs. <laughs> they like this fly. This is a cool little attractor pattern. Um, I've got a 14 jig hook in the vise. This is a three and a half millimeter slotted tungsten bead in gold. I'm gonna use red uh, UTC 70 thread. And we're gonna start right behind the bead, work our way back to the bend of the hook, and I'm gonna use some purple saddle hackle for the tail. Pull off maybe oh, somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch of fibers. Make an effort to try and keep the tips as even as possible. And I'm going to tie them in right at the bend, capture them with the thread wrap it all the way up to the bead just like the blue dart uh, you can add lead wire to this if you want to make it a little bit heavier I'm getting more and more to where I just change the bead sizes because it's easier to tell how much weight is on them by just looking at the bead so I know if I have a bigger bead it's a heavier fly and if I have a smaller bead it's a lighter fly next up I'm going to tie in the ribbing I've got sulky tinsel in the opal color and just some 7x tippet that I've got in my hand here now Got them together. Let's see if I can pull these down to where they're even. There we go. Now the tips are relatively even. I'm going to capture them with a the thread and then tie them all the way down the shank. I'm tying both of those in together. You can see those separate a little bit. Tie them all the way down to the tail. Then I'm going to add my body. The body is ice dub and UV purple. So just like always, Dubbing, dubbing, dubbing. Less is more. We say that all the time, but everybody comes in the shop and emails us saying, how do you get dubbing to be so sparse? It's you do it by taking a bunch like this and pulling about that much out of it and twisting that onto the thread at one time. If you're trying to twist too much dubbing on the thread, it's going to give you fits, especially a more coarse dubbing like ice dub. So little amounts, long dubbing noodle, like so. Then I'm going to take my fingers and just slide it right down to the hook like that. And then I'm going to try and start covering my red thread. I'm going to make a body all the way up to the bead. Perfect. Just like that. Next up I'm going to take the sulky tinsel and I'm going to counter wrap the direction, the body, the opposite direction I wrap the thread kind of wrapping that dubbing again trapping some of those high spots in the dubbing to try and smooth it out tying it off get rid of the excess then I'm going to take the 7x tippet and I'm going to wrap it the opposite direction first I got to get it out of my tail though there we go so I'm going to wrap it the opposite direction I wrap the sulky which is the same direction as the thread this is adding some durability to the fly holds the dubbing in place, holds the tinsel in place, all the way to the bead, and then get rid of it. 7x tippet. Next up is the soft hackle. I'm going to use a, this is a furnace hen hackle. Again, you could use Greenwell or Brown or probably even Coachman Brown, but uh, Fiery Brown would work fine. This is a, a furnace. I've trimmed a little tab in the tip of this that I can capture with the thread hold it in place then I'm just gonna stroke those fibers back and just make one wrap of hackle one time around capture it with the thread you don't want this hackle to be too dense very sparse soft hackle is better then I'm gonna pull all the fibers back with my fingers and try and coax them backward hold them in place with the thread a little bit now they're all facing back like a soft hackle should and the last step is to add the thorax, UV dub and I, or sorry, ice dub and UV pink. Once again, tiny, tiny amounts of pink dubbing. It doesn't take very much to make a little hot spot. 
just enough to cover the area where I've tied back that hackle. Clean up my head a little bit. Oops. Like so. And then I'm going to try and throw a few wraps in there to make a little red bar right behind the bead. I oftentimes whip finish them two or three times using this trusty TMCO midge whip finisher. Pull nice and tight on the thread. Trim that away. Add some head cement and you're all done. You have a fresh purple dart. This is a really great attractor pattern. Fish as well as a dropper below a dry like a chubby Chernobyl or also works great on a nymph rig whether you're indicator nymphing or doing the old Euro nymphing. Have at it.